last several weeks, we have been kind of jumping around, mostly in the Gospel of John, <coughs> learning what it means to have a risen Savior. Savior who doesn't just exist in these <coughs> old Bible stories from the past, but one who is alive today. And as we're going to see in our scripture this morning, one who prays for us. So let us pray. Lord, as we come to your word, we pray that by your Holy Spirit who lives in us, you would plant this word in our hearts and keep it there, causing it to grow and bear fruit for your kingdom. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. We're picking up in the middle, toward the middle of chapter 17 in John, which is when Jesus is praying for his disciples. And we're picking this up in verse 6. Jesus prays to his Father, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Again, this is the word of the Lord. Yes. One of the things that we fear in life is getting lost. I think one of the reasons that GPS devices are so popular is that none of us like to be lost. We don't like feeling disoriented and not knowing where exactly we are or where exactly we're going. And sometimes getting lost can just be a little bit of a nuisance, but other times being lost can be downright terrifying. We are afraid getting lost. Whenever I have to drive around in a new city, in order to avoid getting lost, I like to have every possible route mapped out and planned out ahead of time. When we moved to Pittsburgh, I had printed out six sets of directions for the first day that we were there. The first three were going to take us from our apartment to the Walmart, to the Trader Joe's, and to the U-Haul rental place. The second set of three were to get us back from each of those places. <laughs> because especially in Pittsburgh, you can't just come back the way you came, because chances are the way you came was down through a ravine and through a tunnel and over at least five bridges to get there. So coming back didn't always work out for us. One wrong turn is all it would have taken, and we would have had no clue where we were. Now some people <coughs> like to call that exploring. <laughs> I just call it getting lost. <laughs> if I miss a turn or get off course in a new city, I will much more quickly make an illegal U-turn than I will try to turn down random streets trying try and find my way back. Because in my mind, how do I know that those random streets aren't going to just take me right over a cliff if I turn on them? This is the way that my mind works and why I need to print out my directions. 
Now, fortunately, the directions I printed out worked, but that was just the first day. So the second day, we bought a GPS. <laughs> Moving somewhere new like that is always an exercise in being a little bit lost all the time. It's just, it comes with the territory. But I think what is truly frightening for us are those times in life when we feel lost in places that we used to feel familiar. I mean, some of you this morning might feel like you're lost in your own family. You might feel like your spouse doesn't understand you as much as they used to, or maybe you're not sure who it is that your kids or your parents are turning into these days. You feel a little lost. Or maybe the career path that you've been on hasn't been so much of a path lately as it has been trying to hack through the jungle as you try to find some sense of meaning and purpose and satisfaction in your job. Either that or maybe you've already stepped off the career path and you're into retirement and now you're just not sure what to do with your life. Of course, others of you are lost this morning in the wreckage of grief. It's like a flood has come through and completely wiped away all of the familiar landmarks that you were comfortable with. And now you're not sure when, if ever, you're going to find your bearings again. Now, if you're not lost this morning, you either have been before or chances are you will be someday. We can stay relatively comfortable and familiar for a while, but inevitably, something comes along and it changes the landscape of our lives. And we feel lost. And this scares us. But the good news is, Jesus Christ is the one who finds us when we are lost. We often, when we feel lost, we find ourselves asking questions like, God, where are you in the middle of this? Where is God in this disorienting mess? Well, in our scripture this morning, as Jesus is praying for his disciples, he says to his Father, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me. Jesus is the one who reveals God to us again. In fact, here in this prayer, that's how he basically sums up his entire ministry. This is what Jesus came to do, to reveal God to us again. It's like the beloved hymn says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Jesus finds us when we are lost and reveals God to us again. Now notice that Jesus does this primarily simply by the fact of his own presence. That's why he prayed, while I was with them, I protected them by the name that you gave me. Now I've mentioned before that the name Jesus, or Yeshua, is really a form of the name Joshua, which means Yahweh will save. So in other words, Jesus is the human presence of God's salvation. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus does not reveal God to us through some new religious practice or a unique philosophical idea. Jesus reveals God to us by his very own presence. <coughs> There are times in our lives, especially when we feel lost, where the presence of God seems elusive, hard to find. But every now and then there are those moments when suddenly the presence of God is so thick and so tangible you can almost reach out and grab it. And usually those are unplanned and unscripted moments. It might be a friend laying her hand on you to pray for you. It might be that moment in worship when you take the bread and the cup of communion into your hands. It might be when you go and visit the grave of a loved one and for the first time you are actually able to feel some joy and thanksgiving, even in spite of your grief. When we are lost, it is this presence 
of God that we need and desire most. We don't need someone to come and tell us more about God. What we need is God to come and actually find us where we are. And in Christ, that's exactly what happens. And when Jesus finds us, as he prays in this prayer, he continues to protect us from getting truly lost again. In this section of the prayer that we read, Jesus makes two main requests for his disciples. And the first is that God would protect us. Three times he mentions protection. He says, Holy Father, protect them. And then he says, while I was with them, I protected them. And then he prays again, my prayer is that you protect them from the evil. Now instead of trying to draw out some deep theology about this protection, what I want you to do this morning is just take a minute to notice what's happening right here. Jesus himself is praying for his disciples. Jesus himself prays for you. For me. God the Son asks God the Father to protect us from getting lost. And is there anyone that God the Father would be more likely to listen to than His only Son? I mean, is there any reason that God the Father would not listen to this prayer? No. And that's why Paul can say, I am convinced that nothing in all of creation can ever, ever separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus finds us when we are lost, and he will never lose us again. In fact, once he finds us, he also sends us on a mission. He says to his Father, sanctify them by the truth. <coughs> As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. So Jesus not only finds us, he also gives our lives a mission and a purpose that they never had when we were still lost. He sends us on a mission, on his very own mission. Now having a mission like this in front of you is actually one of the best ways to avoid getting lost. If you think about it, Without some sense of mission or purpose in front of us, the only two options you have are to either stay put where you are and do nothing, or wander around aimlessly and hope you stumble on something. And neither of those does anybody any good. But when you have a mission, or basically a map in front of you that tells you where you are and where it is that you're going, you're not lost. You're not lost in your marriage or in your family when you can share a common mission in Christ together. In fact, I've, I heard someone say once that a marriage is strongest not when two people are standing and facing each other, but when the two are standing side by side and holding hands and looking in the same direction together. It's that common mission and purpose that keeps us from getting lost. And as Jesus tells us in his prayer, our mission is to be made holy for service. I said earlier that Jesus prayed for two things in this section. The first was protection. The second is that we would be sanctified, which all that means is to be made holy. That's the second thing that Jesus prays for his disciples. He says, sanctify them by the truth. As you have sent me, so I have sent them. In other words, holiness is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. And that end is that we might reach a lost world for Christ. Holiness is not about trying to be the most decorative object on God's shelf. Holiness is about being <coughs> equipped and prepared 
for this mission of being sent into the world to tell more people about Jesus. If you want, you can think of it kind of like a search and rescue team that has been trained and given the right equipment to be able to go in and rescue people, let's say from a river that has flooded over and there are people that are stranded. Now if you think about this search and rescue team, if they were to just stay up on the bank, out of the water, with all of their training and their equipment, holding it up like it was some kind of trophy, that's not going to do anybody any good. The whole point of their training and their equipment is so that they can go back into the water without being overcome by the water and then rescue the people who are lost in that flood. Being sanctified, being made holy, it's a little bit like that. Holiness is less about making ourselves look good for God than it is about preparing us to go into the world without being overcome by the world so that we can help rescue people for Jesus. That's what Jesus prays for us. And that makes all of us missionaries by default. I've said it before that everyone who is a Christian, everyone who calls Jesus Christ Lord is by definition a missionary. Someone who is sent wherever they are. Every one of us has been found by Jesus, is protected by Jesus, and is being sent back into the world with this mission of telling more people about Jesus, who is God with us. So, wherever you are this morning, remember the Lord's prayer for you. If you're lost this morning, remember that Jesus has already been looking for you and will find you and will keep you in God's protection. And if you feel like you're already found this morning, remember what Jesus found you for. Remember the mission that he has given to each and every one of us to go into the world without being of the world to tell more people about Christ. And of course, wherever you are, whether you feel lost or found this morning, know that because Jesus lives, he prays for you and for me, now and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.